All right, let's call this meeting to order. Ms. Benitez, roll call, please. Commissioner Vanderstar. Here. Commissioner Adam. Here. Commissioner Capolongo. Present. Commissioner Pru. Present. Vice Chair Frost will not be here. He's let me know of his absence. And for staff, we have a new member. We have Harvey Cross here. He is our newest senior planner. Larry Harmer. Harvey Cross is our newest senior planner here in the town of Florence. Larry Harmer will still be part of our group, but he'll just be around less. And with that, that's the end of roll call. All right. All right. Uh, Ms. Adam, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, discussion, approval or disapproval of the minutes from the last regular meeting conducted on June 2nd. Commissioners, comments? No comments. I'll make a motion. Do we approve the minutes of the last meeting, June 2nd, 2022? All I'll right. second. All right. Ms. Adam, uh, made the motion to approve the minutes and Mr. Capilano second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. Old business. Uh, presentation, public hearing, recommendation of approval, approval with conditions or denial of the uh, major planned unit development amendment. Uh, Ms. Benitez, do you have an uh, update? I do, so I want to put this on the record. The major, plan, major planned unit development amendment, the applicant has withdrawn their application, so I'll read the official email here. Please accept this email as confirmation that our client would like to withdraw this case, PZ2223. Please let me know if you have any additional information or require anything else to complete this request. And this is by George Pasquale from Withy Morris, who was representing the applicant. So with that being said, this is no longer going forward. It will not require action tonight, and it will not be going to the town council. It will not be moving forward overall. Hmm. All right. So. So that issue is a moot point then this evening? Correct. All right. Um, we'll move on to new business then. Uh, do you have a presentation to approve approval with conditions or denial of the preliminary plat for Western Crossings Phase 2 uh, presentation? For tonight's meeting, we have a, oh boy, there it goes. We have a preliminary plat for Western Crossings Phase 2. Western Crossing is one whole development. The first phase had already been platted back in the early 2000s. We are bringing forward the second phase to be, to going through the platting process. This preliminary plat is located at the northeast corner of Centennial Park Avenue and Highway 287, mm -hmm. so just to the west of the Green Tree Inn. We're looking at 35.57 gross acres of land, and it will consist of 142 single-family lots. These lots range from 5,390 square foot to 10,982. 
with the minimum lot width of 47 and lot depth of 100, 10, 100, but most of them are 115 feet. Access to the phase will be provided through phase one, and most of those access points will come off of Centennial Park Avenue. The zoning for Western Crossings is a PUD, R1, or single family residential, so it does have a planned unit development attached to the overall development itself. Now, the density within calls for a 4.2, but just this section has a density is 3.99. Overall, with the two phases combined, we will have 272 lots, and that combined density will come out to 4.18 units per acre, and the max density within the PUD was listed at 4.25, so it is still within that density set. Hmm. For access points, there are three points of vehicular access, but all of them are found in phase one. They come off of Centennial Park Avenue. What the town is looking for the developer or requiring of the developer is to widen Centennial Park Avenue to help accommodate the increased traffic. But the traffic impact analysis and ADOT are both requiring deceleration lanes um, coming off 287 and for also turning right into um, deceleration lanes for both eastbound left turns and the westbound right turn to 287 as well. Now, the town engineer is working with the developer on these improvements. We are continually working as the staff has found that there are some off-site improvement challenges and that they do need to continue to be addressed. Hmm. But I will get to that point later, but for now, with the landscaping, they do have active open space in the northwest, northwest corner of the development. It's a park. There are walking paths that go to this park and also continue throughout the development itself so everyone can get to the park and to other open spaces. Um, there is a large wash that is in place and will be landscaped as well to continue to help drainage through that development. Most of the proposed landscape plants that are within this landscape, preliminary landscape plan within the packet are in line with the Penal AMA plant list for low water usage. And we have also set the condition to make that turf playable or in playable areas and not under monuments or in just retention bins, basins because that is not a, a sustainable use of water in that area. Now we did find the designs meet most of the development code and the PUD requirements and staff has found that there are further concerns on the offsite improvement for access. Now, we have Harvey here to go into more depth about that, but with that finding, staff recommends that Planning and Zoning Commission table this item for now so we can continue to work with ADA on these offsite improvements for access and just the overall entrance for this development or have something that's more Hmm. Uh, just better improve for long-term living. And the developer has been made aware of these comments. So we asked staff to table this for a further meeting when we have better understanding of how we're working through those. Okay. So, all right, thank you, Ms. So with that, if there are any Not questions other than what's to be motioned, we're here to answer them. Right. Commissioners, questions, comments? Y if I may, um, how long ballpark? I know dealing with ADOT can be fun. Um, <laughs> do we have an idea how long we're going to have to table this? Just so the developer knows, hey, we're not just pushing this off. We want to see things happen, but you know, just a, a time frame ballpark. Right. I don't have an exact time frame, but we do have a meeting with ADOT on Monday to just go ahead and discuss these offsite improvements. Okay. So it's not like we're waiting a month to meet with them. We are actually going to meet with them on Monday. You must have made that appointment six months ago. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So any, any other comments? Can I just ask a question just so I understand? Mm -hmm. All the access into this development is off 287, so there's one single road in and out? Correct. 
And Centennial Park Avenue was supposed to be developed to stretch all the way to Adamsville. However, that plan never panned out. So the town does want to continue that plan to extend it. We just don't know how long it's going to take because there are private landowners that are there that we'd have to work through. Because that doesn't seem like it'll work, right? So. Thank you, Ms. Adams. Any more comments? All right, well, based on uh, the staff's recommendation, uh, do we have a motion to uh, table? I'll make, I'll make a motion to table pending staff. All right, and a second. A second? Okay, Mr. Capolongo uh, made the motion. Ms. Adams, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. All right. Next on the agenda, then, uh, presentation, uh, public hearing, recommendation of approval, approval with conditions, denial for a conditional use permit. Um, Ms. Benitez, do you have a presentation? Yes, I do. So I need to share a screen. Town staff rec received a request from the applicant B and S Equities for a conditional use permit for a mini storage facility within the town of Florence. This is located at the southeast corner of State Route 79 and Florence Heights Drive, two major intersections that are coming in and out of the community. The parcel is approximately 2.92 acres and is already zoned for highway business commercial. The, story for, the storage facility will, will be used for dead storage or self-storage, also known as mini storage. There will be an office for employees to be in and to help those who are renting. The zoning does allow for the use of mini storage or self-storage with a conditional use permit. I placed the section here in this PowerPoint under Highway Business Commercial Chapter 150.06C, Conditional Use Permits, Number 5, Many Storage Facilities Provided They Are Used Solely for Dead Storage. And this is exactly what this request is for. No RVs, no boats, this is mini storage strictly. Now they're looking to put in 443 self-storage units and an approximately 500 square foot office building. This office building will be there permanently. It is not temporary. There will be one to two employees that will work there from Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. And security cameras will be provided for surveillance during and after office hours. Vehicle access will come off of State Route 79. It will also come off of Florence Heights Drive. There are three access points. Two are Florence Heights Drive, or off of that road and the other is Office 79. Each of these access points will have a 30-foot wide gate that can only be accessed through a code or from the inside. So only renters can get in and use the facilities or if someone's looking to rent. The setbacks to this property, they have 25 feet in the front, 20 from the street side. Um, they also have 10 from the rear. They have 10 on the side that's on the interior, not facing the street. Now there will be a variety of units within the storage facility, ranging from 5 by 10s to 20 by 30 units. But only 20% of these will be air conditioned for just the facility itself. This is an enclosed property. It is open air, but it will be enclosed by 6 foot high masonry block walls. I'll have a picture of those coming up here soon. And this will develop alongside ADOT's roundabout construction. So the the applicant has worked with ADOT in their roundabout plans, so their site plan is compatible with that new design of the roadways. So this is a site plan of what they're looking to complete on that corner. You can see the new roundabout as well as where ADOT has added in their extra 
areas and then the entrances is shown. There will be two fire hydrants added onto the property for fire access. This will be, this is one option of the outside exterior. They have multiple options for how the wall will look on the outside, multiple options and colorings. Um, this is just one of them. Now staff did find that it is within an area that's B2 or highway business commercial. To the north we have some single family homes. To the east we also have some single family homes. There is a bus holding depot just to the northeast as well. But to the west there is another highway business commercial lot that is currently vacant. And then on site of course is highway business commercial. Oh, and to the south is the apartments can't forget them. Public meetings, we did have a neighborhood meeting take place on Monday, June 13th at 6 p.m. at the community center right here at 778 North Main. We did have one person from the public come in and we had answered their questions and they gave us some comments. And then today we have our commission meeting hearing in action and then it'll go to town council for final action on July 5th, as well as a public hearing. Letters of notification were mailed out 300 feet from the property line of this project, as well as ads were posted in the local newspaper, and a sign was also posted on the property. The Planning and Zoning Commission may forward a recommendation of approval approval with conditions or denial. Staff has found that this application meets our requirements in terms of the development code and that we also recommend approval. With that, I would ask if the commission has any comments. Otherwise, you can move on to opening the public hearing. Okay, thank you, Ms. Benitez. Commissioners? What's going on? Yeah. Is there a question or are we? No, no, no question. I think we're waiting for the dinner. Yeah. Oh, okay. How about the public speak? Uh oh. So are you open to the public? Yes. Oh, open. Oh, 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 comments open to the public. Okay, I asked you to formally open the public hearing. So, say you're formally open. Oh, okay. I'm, oh, I'm formally opening to uh, public comments. Please. Anyone? Yes. Please state your name and address. Uh, good evening, Chairman and members of the, of the Commission. My name is Kathy DeRosa. I live at 7737 West Noble Prairie Drive and I stand in support of the project. It seems like a good project in a great location mm -hmm. and something that will hopefully will spur economic development here in the city of Florence and the town of Florence. Thank you. Thank you. If there are any members online who would like to speak, please raise your hand and we can give you a chance to speak on the item. <laughs> Please come forward. Again, please state your name and address. Good evening. My name is Courtney Ramirez, and I reside at 729 West Bunker Hill Drive here in town. Um, and I'm opposed to more storage units. Um, I know a lot of people were in an uproar with Anthem, but this is like right at the entrance of downtown, you know, more than 400 units. Um, is that really the best use for that piece of property? Um, I just think that you guys should really consider that. Something like that should be on the outskirts of town and not right at the entrance of the heart of town. So something else could go there that will provide something more beneficial for the community. Hmm. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Anyone else? And we'll, Ms. Benitez? Please close the public hearing. All right. So, um, 
we close the call to the public. Uh, commission, commissioners, any comments? I had a question. It was just interesting to me. Um, I know we're getting, I believe, two roundabouts, right? It's not just one. Correct. And from experience in uh, upstate Arizona, when you're not used to it, traffic comes whipping through there, and it, you know, it, it's something very different. And I'm just curious about this, doing the construction at the, of this at the same time as the roundabouts. That's what it says in the design review. Right. Would you want to answer that? We have the applicant here, Brian Baker, to answer that. Good evening, Commissioners. My name is Brian Baker. I'm the uh, developer of the property and the owner and the general contractor. What was your question, ma'am? It was the timing of doing the construction of this f storage facility mm -hmm. at the same time, I understand you're coordinating yes. with ADOT as the roundabouts. And I'm just envisioning it's going to be pretty difficult traffic-wise anyway just doing the roundabouts. And then this will be further right, uh, traffic on Florence Drive getting into the roundabout. So I, I'm, I'm just asking why it's at the same well, time. Well, that's, that's a good point. Um, the choices are this. Uh, if I don't do it, coincidentally, with ADOT's work, then there's going to be 10 months of ADOT's construction and six months of mine. My actual dirt work is only about three weeks long. It's minimal. And so I thought it would be better for the community, particularly the neighbors, if I, if I try to do it at the same time that they're doing those, you know, one mess is better than two. Gotcha. But Thank I'm, you. you know, I'm open to any other suggestions. Uh, but no, but our dirt work, I mean, the site is in pretty good shape right now. And so we have some over activating and conditioning. But once the pad is done, uh, then we have, you know, concrete and asphalt. So I, I felt it would be a, a better bet to do it try to do it coincidentally. Do you have any other questions or any questions from the audience that I could answer? Well, if I could, um, I also am very aware of entrances to our downtown, our historic downtown. And uh, I know that we're trying very hard to make everything welcoming. So I know there's another storage facility at the other end of Florence Heights Drive, and I'm just uh, inquiring as to what you can do cosmetically to the wall so that we're not looking at a block CMU wall as, as best as possible. So uh, put the best foot forward. Anything else? Okay, thank you, thank you. Any other comments from the commission? All right, well, so. Um, actually, if, if I may, yes. and we're getting feedback. Uh, Ms. Benitez, you said that at the public meeting, someone from the community came. Can you Correct. share their comments? Their they, com or were they just, was it more informational? Did they have questions? Uh, they didn't really have questions. They, their comments are mostly on the roundabouts and how the applicant was working with ADOT. He didn't really have any questions specifically about the site other than where it was, where, you know, which property he owned. So no? There was no concerns about the- Either way though? Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Anyone else then? So uh, from, the, from the public, we have one in favor and one against. And uh, to sum up, the staff recommends that we go ahead and and move forward with conditions. So at this point, uh, can I have a motion to um, approve, with con approve, approve with conditions or denial? Motion, I'll, please. I'll make, motion I'll make a motion that we approve conditional use permit for BNS Equities LLC for self storage facility PZ 22 27. Right. Um, with conditions. Sorry? With yeah, conditions? She did with conditions. With, with conditions from staff. With conditions as, as stipulated by staff. Yeah. Okay. Ms. Adams or Ms. Adams made the motion. Ms. Adams, excuse me, made the motion. I'll second. second. I'll second. Mr. Capolongo, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. 
right. Next on the agenda, next on the agenda um, is call to the is call it, to the public. Actually, it's presentation information only. It's the next item on the agenda. Okay. Commissioner is not allowed to discuss, but ask well, staff the, to update. The presentation is the update on Hunt Highway improvements and the. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I, I got got ahead of myself here. That's all right. <laughs> no, as a matter of fact, yes, please update on the Hunt Highway improvements. All right. So the town of Florence is looking to improve or widen Hunt Highway up to our boundary, which is the railroad tracks. It's something we're in negotiations with right now. Two of the main roadblocks in that widening are working with the county to make sure the part we expand also continues to expand through the county section of Hunt Highway. And the other roadblock is working with the railroad on how we want to improve or make improvements to the railroad when making that expansion. So we are definitely looking at improvements there. Uh, I, I couldn't tell you a timeline for when. I have contacted the county about when they're looking to make their improvements. And currently in their negotiations, and my contact said about three years they were looking to widen it in their section between Arizona Farms and where it meets our jurisdiction. So that's the information I found on this, on this item. So I'm sorry, so it's delayed to, until when? So the town is still looking to widen it, but are just our main roadblocks of that railroad in Pinal County. I'm working with them to widen their section. Pinal County's timeline, they're looking at maybe three years in the future of widening their section. Two years? Three years. Three years? Three years. Hmm. County likes to drag their feet. Wow. Hmm. Speaking of dragging feet, I have to ask, what's the, how's the railroad responded? Because they're notorious for not. Right. And they're looking for, um, right now it's street level, and they kind of want the tracks to be a bit elevated. Uh, as far as other negotiations, I couldn't tell you. Hmm. I'm surprised they're talking to you, though. <laughs> So we're looking at look, looking at three years yet for the county side. Hmm. I couldn't. I, we don't quite have the timeline for the town side, but they are already looking to widen it. That's it's in the plans. Hmm. We're looking to get it in the budget for this new year. Hmm. Gee, do we have any uh, suggestions on how we can, uh, you know? It, encourage the county to to move forward more quickly I, I don't know I have no I have no suggestions on that one maybe council could council they could probably talk with them I just see if they can get that yeah that could. To expedite things or <laughs> okay at least get off their tails right so um, would that be uh, would that be an assignment we can make this evening to I can have definitely someone contact the council? I can definitely ask. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I can work with the council on that. All right. See what we can do. Then we have the wastewater treatment plant update. Right. So C Vice Chair Frost in the last meeting asked for an update on the Section 11 wastewater treatment plant up just north of Anthem. That wastewater treatment plant is within the county, so I reached out to them and asked as well. They are looking to take, um, decommission the plant. Right now, it's an, it's an old open air wastewater plant, not the best. They are looking to decommission it by 2023, and they have the zoning, and they are working on the site plans for a new modern wastewater treatment plant in another location. Uh, I wasn't given the specific one, but they are in the process of that site plan of developing the new wastewater treatment center. Okay. 
Okay, thank you. Comments? Comments, questions? <clears throat> so, uh, future agenda items? For future agenda items, we do have a another storage facility, Roadrunner uh -huh. Storage is called. It's on a parcel north of Franklin. This parcel is has been zoned for this use since, I believe, 2008. But the developer is finally putting it into place. So that will come in the next meeting for design review. Hmm. Yeah. And we may bring the walk not the, the Western Crossings plat back next meeting, depending on how things go with our meeting on Monday. Hmm. It's a popular, it's a popular business, <laughs> storage facilities. So. <laughs> All right, anything else? I would like to welcome our newest commissioner, Michael Vanderstar, to our group. He is recently appointed and I'd like to welcome them to our group. Thank you, Maricela. Welcome, Commissioner Vanderstar. Thank you, sir. Yes, you, welcome, Michael. Thank you, Commissioner. Otherwise, that is it. All right. Any, uh, anything else then? <clears throat> so, call to the public? Correct. All right. So I have to read this, okay. Call yes. to the public for public Comment on issues within the jurisdiction of the Planning and Zoning Commission. Individual Commission members may respond to criticisms made, may ask staff to review a matter raised, or may ask that a matter be put on a future agenda. However, members of the Commission shall not discuss or take action on any matter during an open call to the public unless the matters are properly noticed for discussion and legal action. So, we have a... My name's Gordon Lehman, 5996 West Bushwood Way, Florence. Uh, uh, just a couple of comments. Uh, uh, since I noticed these uh, updates on the Hunt Highway improvements were on here, I wanted to ask about how does the uh, Post and Butte new parking lot and access to the Butte fit into this plan and because uh, you're going to have to cross the railroad tracks or go under it or something. I assume that's part of the comments that Marcella made. Hmm. Second is that along with this road improvement, will the water and sewer lines be extended all the way up to uh, Anthem since the uh, development east of Felix Road is now Florence, town of Florence's responsibility and not EPCORS. So uh, just wondering about all those costs that will be involved as well as the uh, highway improvements. Hmm. Thank you. Oh, thank you. May yes. I say something before the next oh. um, Regarding that on the um, uh, Post and Butte Park, I'd like to ask if we could have an update on the next uh, P&Z agenda. As I understand it, the entrance was going to move. Okay. Hmm. Okay, thank you. All right, state your name please and address. Good afternoon, commissioners. My name is Nicole Bucciolato and I live at 360 East Rebel Street in Florence. And um, I came to you guys two weeks ago to talk about the new public works building in the Eco Station on Rebel Street. Mm -hmm. And when I attended the meeting, I had just found out hours before about the application for the public works building. Um, since then, I have been doing my research and attended last week's council meeting also. And myself, where myself and nine or ten other individuals spoke against this building, finding its new home in a residential neighborhood. I have spoke to a lot of individuals about this proposed building. And it seems that a lot of people have a lot of different information when it comes to this structure. I also know that this is an R, a residential R2, and normally those type of buildings have to have a 20-foot setback and be set on three acres of property. From the meeting I attended two weeks ago, I know that there was mention of only a 10-foot setback, and that is not three acres of land right there on that plat. Besides the building being a large metal eyesore in a neighborhood full of homes, many of which have been newly remodeled, I feel like there needs to be more information gathered by our town officials. There was mention of a meeting or a work session on this, on this item at the last council meeting last week, and I really hope that that is held too. 
Since this is zoned R2, more than likely it will have to pass before planning and zoning for a conditional use permit. So I ask that you guys please take into consideration where this building is, will be located and what it will be utilized for. There are plenty of locations around town that this, where this could be utilized instead of a neighborhood on one of the busiest streets to downtown Florence in the historic district. Thank you guys for your time and consideration. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we, we sent that to the town council and what was their... Uh, uh, well, the Nias can update us. It didn't go to town council for action. However, there was a there was a lot of comments on the call of the public, and town council did direct staff to hold a work session on it, and that has been okay. there. There's working on the work session. So, oh. just just for clarification, mm -hmm. just because you you made a good point, and I just want to clarify something. It's my understanding that. Because it's the town, they're not subject to planning and zoning or any of the other code. You want to speak on that, Harvey? It's there. Yeah, that was pointed out at yeah, so during that discussion last meeting. Those, requi those requirements don't hold because it's the town. Correct? Am I correct? Commissioner, uh, could I address that? Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Caballano. Um, well, we're looking at that with legal staff, and, and we're, uh, staff is reevaluating the, the site and the requirements, and we're going to be coming back to council with a, a revised plan at the work session. Hmm. Right. Well, following on that, I would ask that at our next P&Z meeting, it specifically quoted an ARS state statute that said the town would be exempt from having to adhere to zoning rules, and also it said that local community development had some stipulation. I would like to know uh, those two rules in writing. Hmm. Thank you. All right, thank you. Any, anyone else? Uh, we have one online. Okay. 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 Uh, Joe Reese, you are unmuted, so you can go ahead. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. My name is Joe Reese and I reside at 567 North Warner Street. And I'd like to piggyback just a little bit on what Mrs. Buccellato spoke concerning the Eco Station. I was at that particular meeting when it was discussed and I spoke at that time as well. Um, I did speak with Maricela recently, and I'm sorry, I don't know what your last name is. So I'll just say Miss Maricela. Uh, in any event, um, there are several of us in this particular area of town that have a laundry list of concerns regarding this eco station. Uh, at the top of the list is how will all of this affect um, property value? And secondly, just like Mrs. Buccellato, I have also done some homework, and uh, I spoke a little bit again with uh, Maricela about that, and I also spoke, went down to the recorder's office, and I got some information on the 80-acre parcel that's just south of our cemetery, and uh, I have pictures here with me, I couldn't make it in person. But I have pictures here that show there is within that 80 parcel um, acre of land there that the town does does own um, a substantial piece of land there. And there is already a form of dumping that is happening, so to speak, on that particular piece of land. Um, I also spoke with Maricela concerning the wastewater plant that is just west of town off of Butte Avenue and uh, we discussed that a little bit and she explained to me uh, how that was zoned currently. But getting back to the real gist of all of this, uh, I, I live close to the area that they're planning on putting this dumping station and this 
I'm not too sure. It's like a, uh, some kind of metal building that's going to go two floors. My concerns mirror many of us that live in the neighborhood, um, the flying debris. Uh, how, how will that even be covered? What will the perimeter look like when it's covered? And knowing that the town of Florence does have several other places to look at, uh, I would ask that those other places would be considered. I do not believe that putting a eco station as such on that land off of Warner and Ruggles is the ideal place to do and, and post something like that up. Yes, there is a need, but then I question that as well. So as community members, we can, with our utility bill, say a water bill, go down the road off of Adamsville Road or 287, and there's a dumping site there that's it's massive, and we can dump up to 5,000 5, pounds. So I ask, what is the relevance of something like this. So we're looking at seven different receptacles. Why there? And I also make this mention too, and not just to U.S. commissioners, but to our town council. If you can honestly say that you would have a yes vote to put this in your particular areas, in your neighborhoods, smack dab in the middle there, then I would kind of question what you're looking at. But if you can actually say no, and say that no, this obviously isn't a type of project that belongs smack dab in, in the neighborhood for various reasons, including health reasons, then I would like to, to this end, ask everyone there present as commissioners and also our town council, then why are you trying to put it in my mind? Because I am definitely opposed to having this kind of building, this kind of project put here on a throwaway road that leads to Main Street. It's just not conducive and it just does not make sense. We have a way to dump already. So these seven receptacles, who would they be serving? because those of us here in town and those that live um, just north of the Gila, Anthem folks, we can already dump. So that said, I just would like to say thank you for listening to my comments, my questions, I appreciate it. All right, thank you. Thank you for expressing your concerns here this evening. Yep. You're welcome. Duly noted. Thank you. Anyone else? No. We have a hand in the back. Please state your name and address. Hi, it's Courtney Ramirez again at 729 West Bunker Hill Drive here in Florence. Yeah. What is our time limit? Is there like an actual time limit? Here there isn't an actual time limit. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. So I'll... Take my time. Does that mean you have a long <laughs> speech? <is there? laughs> well, I just wanted to point out a couple of other things. So I want to go back to the storage facility, too. I think the, and I may be wrong, I don't know, but I think the only person that supported it tonight lives in Anthem, and I believe that person did not want storage facilities in Anthem, but, you know, then they come and voice that, Let's allow stuff like that in downtown. So, but I just want you guys to think about all that. I don't know what the popularity is with all these storage facilities coming into town, but um, we have to plan for the future, right? And, and, and what is really going to serve the community for many years to come, okay? Not just, God, this is three, four, five storage facilities and just, you know, our, our, our recent past. Um, you know, when some people live near where the dump stations propose, they don't want that in their neighborhood, right? And and um, the the public uh, community meeting that was supposedly held on um, the 13th, um, 
I don't buy the paper. I didn't see it. I didn't even know it was happening. Otherwise, I would have attended, and I'm sure more people would have. Um, and why doesn't uh, Florence put those kinds of notices on their Facebook and Instagram page as another avenue to get that stuff out to the community? And it, it's, it, it wasn't posted on the zoning board, you know, so how, how are all these people supposed to know that there was even a community meeting? Not everybody buys the paper. So, you know, put, put stuff like that on your social media. Um, and, and maybe somewhere, you know, people don't search the town of Florence website every day for community meetings. So the more avenues that, that the city of Florence puts out to the community uh, gives us all an opportunity to attend and, and, and voice our opinions on, on that stuff. So, you know, for those that don't want this big two-story garbage cans in their neighborhood, highly consider about the people that live, because this proposed storage facility is in a, in a residential neighborhood. And I believe that traffic study was done three years ago. Our population has changed greatly in three years. So, you know, and we all know that's a, it's a horrible intersection. Yeah, and we're surrounded by prisons and walls. Do we really want that on historical Main Street people? Hmm. Just think about that. Okay. Um, and then regarding Western Crossing, I, you know, D.R. Horton is going to be the builder. Um, we all know all that stuff was 20 years ago. Um, we all know, you know, some of the folks that were here in council and, you know, did a lot of things that a lot of the city folks didn't think was uh, in the best interests of the community. Um, so think about that when it comes time to rezoning our land, right? And once that stuff happens, you know, it, it's hard to take it back. And do we really want our town infiltrated with, with all these builders with HOAs and all? It, does Florence really want that? I mean, I, I don't know, you know, and that highway is dangerous, Centennial Park is a raceway as it is. Um, it seems like there's a, a lot of planning, obviously. Um, there's still pottery on that land. I don't know if you guys are aware of that, but this whole place, you know, there's pottery everywhere, and they claim that that stuff was looked at and, and, and cleared, but there's, there's still pottery over there. Um, and um, so going back to D.R. Horton too, you know, they've, they're recently in another class action uh, uh, lawsuit for faulty workmanship, the newest one in, in Casa Grande. So Oasis was full of um, faulty workmanship with all that, you know, just something to look into again when, when these builders come, what is their reputation with, with building? Um, and, um, but anyway, I think that's about all I have to say about that right now. So just. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks thank for you coming for forward. Up. Next. Actually, if, if I may, um, there was one part of that that I wanted, I would like to see floated up to council about social media usage yeah. for advertising these things. Okay. Um, if we could float that to them, because I think that would fall more under their purview than ours, but I think. Sadly, more people pay attention to social media than anything else. So, so Ms. Benitez, you have that down then? Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Good point. Yes, uh, your name and address, please. My name is Christina Corielli Buckner. I have a little scratch in my throat, so I apologize if I sound like I, I crack up about every other word. You sound I live great. at thank you. <laughs> I live at seven eight one two West Willoway, and I do live in Anthem. So um, and I'm in full support of the young woman's assessment of the of the facility being planted in a in a, in a home in a housing development, especially in the old part of Florence. One of the challenges I think the city is is facing, it's trying to grow up um, with a planning with a general plan, and I think sometimes we become seduced by offerings to build. Um, whether it's uh, industrial parks or light industry or housing, without a whole lot of kind of future kind of planning that involves the impact of the people who actually live in these little areas. One of the things we've noticed as my husband and I migrated from California to here is that Florence is, is trying to grow up 
but do you want it to look like a Coolidge or an Apache Junction, which quite frankly is Hamajam. You've got, you've got this mixed use, you've got homes uh, scattered in amongst zoned areas for an industry, storage, and, the, and, and it looks it. And quite frankly, it, it, if I were a homeowner and I lived on Ruggles Road and I had, had the prospects, whether it was storage or a dumping facility or, or anything of the like, it would not be my, it, it would not be something that would entice me to want to stay in the area. And if you're trying to, if you're trying to uh, create opportunities and growth in an old town and have it grow up at the same time, I think it's really important you also preserve some of its historical significance and storage or dumping grounds or whatever needs to be done as part of moving into the 21st century, or actually in, in this case moving forward, really needs to be really thoughtfully planned. And I would not want to be a homeowner having that next to my home. And I was one of the individuals who made a big stink about the storage facility on Hunt Highway because again, as a consumer who's bought a home, I don't want to look at a storage facility. I didn't, I didn't come here to have storage parked to my home. I don't care if it's one story. I don't care if it's 10 stories. Or it's a dumping facility for any kinds of recyclables or whatever the plan is. I just don't think that's a good use of the land. And if I were a homeowner adjacent to that, I'd be getting my hackles up. Thank you for your time. Let me just ask you one question, though. Sure. Uh, what, what kinds of uh, businesses or... Um, you know, establishments, you know, would you like to see in these areas, and in, in especially in downtown uh, Florence? Well, um, that's really a, a, really a good question. I mean, the, the, the most optimum is to have, obviously, retail. But it's kind of its location relative to the two other Florences, if you want to look at Anthem as a Florence. And I think the other is Caliente. So you've kind of got this little triangle with distance between. And you've got these little tiny uh, retail outlets on Main Street and Old Florence, which in itself is quaint. But at the end of the day, that doesn't sustain or really bring in the economy. So you have to, you know, with a business development manager, you need to get out there and pound the pavement to, to create the attraction of getting businesses in. And really, if you have a general plan, you got to lift. You've got to live to your plan, and not and not not collapse to the pressures of somebody who's willing to pay um, money to buy to, to buy a piece of land. I mean, if I live next to that, I would really I would have really a serious problem with that. But I think it's retail restaurants. You got to you got to get people in. I mean, this at one point this was a town. So something happened that changed it from what it was to where it is today. And maybe guys need to go back and kind of rethink what you're doing to attract businesses. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right. So, yes. We have one more. Oh, we have two more. We have one online. Oh, and then we'll end it there. Okay. Please, yes, yeah, state your name and address, please. My name is Bonnie Rogers. I live at 5672 West Autumn Vista Way. I was in one of the um, four of a group that spearheaded the, uh, partition, the petition to oppose the um, rezoning mm -hmm. for Merrill Ranch Parkway and Felix Road. In the process, uh, we did, I went door to door. That's how I got the world word out. I got my notification and I'm like, oh no, not in my neighborhood. This is a master plan community. I feel this is what we bought into. This is what we need to stick to. And I understand that the church is having their financial difficulty and they wanted to sell the land, but they didn't consider the neighborhood that they wanted and what they wanted to do with it. Mm -hmm. So now that's a moot point, you're correct. Right. But I just want to let you know, since you were asking a previous individual, what businesses would we like to see? Well, in the process from April until now, I have spoken in my walks about my knocking on people's doors, many people, feel that assisted living facility, memory care, daycare, um, I was thinking like hospice facilities, because where we're at in Anthem at Merrill Ranch, we are a multi-generational community, and we would benefit from those types of facilities. Mm -hmm. Now, I lived with my parents for a time in Sun City West, and that 
is a anth well, it's, it's a Pulte Del Webb type of community setting, a well-established one. And within those community settings, there they had assisted living, they had hospice, mm -hmm. they had. Um, facilities that would help the families and we are in, in that setting that's we're seniors but in our community we're unique because one side is families and the other side are seniors and we have a mix of some of the seniors living on the park side some of the seniors living on the on our on the 50, 55 and older side and meeting these people they're like going I would just love to have a facility where I met one one late one homeowner whose husband needs a 24-hour care. She's okay, but he needs 24-hour care now. And she goes, I just can't go anywhere. I have to have somebody come in. And it would be nice to have respite care and have those facilities within our community. Wow. And so if there is a way that you can develop some type of special committee or economic develop committee and look at these things that would bring those developers to our community to give us a good proper land use for the greater good of our community not just for a few that have an rv and not just for those who have a lot of stuff or a business that they need to stick it somewhere for a time being and store it they need to have some type of a committee that looks specifically at economic development and bringing these developers into Florence in order to get us the revenues that we need in order to, to make this a beautiful community. Like Chandler, you know, I, I lived in Chandler for a long time, and the downtown Chandler area used to be really down, run down, and they've worked to get those together, get the communities in. Same thing with Gilbert. And I see Florence doing the same thing, but we just have to get together and work together to get this going and get this, you know, get something going so that we're not just getting storage facilities after storage facilities. I mean, there is a purpose for them, but they definitely don't belong in a community next to families, you know, residential homes that people bought into. You know, I was, I was three years ago, I bought my house, and I spent a lot of money and hard-earned hard earned dollars and then I come along and they're like oh you're gonna put the, this mini storage facility when they told me that this was just supposed to be worship oh no that's how this got opposed because I joined with my for, joined forces with my neighbors in my community and I got the information out there and we heard you so I appreciate <laughs> that but I'm just saying you know um, for a town as a whole and a community as a whole, we can come together and we can work together and we can make this an awesome place to live by getting in the businesses and the facilities and the um, services that are, are needed for the people in our community, not for people who want to come from the outside of our community just to make a buck or two. All right. Thank you. Thank You're you for welcome. your comments. Anyone else? No. We have one online. Okay. Let me. Hmm. Okay. Go ahead. Are you there? Howard, can you hear us? Bias. Mr. Bias, can you hear us? All right, we can't hear you, Mr. Bias, but we see your hand up and we've unmuted you. Um, because we can't hear you, I, I guess at this point we move forward. If you want, you can reach out to me and the staff. My name's Maricela Benitez if you have any comments you would like to share. Okay. Sorry we couldn't, sorry we couldn't make <laughs> sorry connection. Sorry we couldn't make contact. <clears throat> Maricela, it's showing four participants. We're only seeing three on this screen. Uh, technically, we're a participant. We're the, oh, panelist. the panelist. Okay. So there's three attendees and one panelist. Thank you. 
All right. So, any other comments? So, so we close uh, to the general public. Um, call to the commission, current events only. I have nothing. Okay, close. I, I, oh, oh, I was just looking to see Ms. Down, Adam, downstream please. there. Yes. Uh, I'd just like to first of all thank everybody. I think that all government only works with participation and all of us only know what we know. So the more of you that come out and read the agendas and participate, um, the better. I would like though, I'd ask the council to review this recording because many of the things you're discussing are beyond this commission's ability, right? And it really is a discussion that the council needs to hear about what you want in terms of business development and those types of things. That's not something that we can really do from planning and zoning. Um, I also have a, a plea to the staff here tonight and to the council. It's a specific to the Public Works Utility Building and the bins, but um, on any um, thing that is brought before us where public comment is not required and therefore is shut down, my request is that just because you can do it doesn't mean you should. And I see faces that I recognize from the RV storage facility. And just imagine if you are going to have an eco station put there, all right, in zoned R2 residential, that RV storage was being placed in a commercial zone. I understand that was not preferable, but at least it was zoned commercial. This is in the middle of a neighborhood, and it was asked that there was no public participation. So I ask you, how would you feel? So just my plea to the staff here, wherever possible, please let the public speak when you're doing such a drastic zoning change in our neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Adam. Yes, Commissioner Capilango. I'd also like to, maybe when you speak to council, give them a little nudge. We're supposed to have a council liaison at these meetings, and the last several meetings have been Absolutely. not not heated, but warm. Um, and I think council should have representation here too, so they can reply, they can report back. Hmm. Thank you, Commissioner Capilano. Commissioner, no, I, I'm who else? Second, with Commissioner Capilano saying we have a lot of people who are speaking their experiences, their concerns, and I feel like we need to have a liaison here to hear that and take that back. Oh, sorry. So yeah, so we have a lot of people who are attending and speaking their concerns, and I, I feel like we need to have a liaison to take that back to council. So thank you. Well said. All right, Ms. Benitez, anything else to discuss this evening? No. So uh, we can adjourn. At your leisure. I will make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> I, I will second. second. I'll second. Mr. or Commissioner Capilongo made the motion and Commissioner Adams second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Meeting is adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>